Hi, everyone, and welcome to That CBD Show. I'm Christy Burkhead, and with me is Drew Burkhead. Good morning. Today we Afternoon, are going to, evening. yeah, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be spending a little bit of time talking about CBD and addictions, um, a topic that I thought might be of a lot of interest. So before we get started, though, I think Drew's got some news to update us on in the state of Florida. Florida. Yeah, I just really quick, uh, just in Florida, hemp is moving forward in, in Florida. So March 20. Six, there was a notice put out by the U.S. Hemp Roundtable. And again, this company is fantastic. Like, they really are um, working to promote and hemp and educate lawmakers all across the country. So states have been... So there was the federal farm bill that was clear, cleared out. Right. But then after that, then the states have to kind of start making their own jurisdictions and rulings on handling CBD. So and, and hemp. And hemp. Right. So hemp. The hemp farm bill really focused on hemp, right? That was mostly... And, and yeah, hemp-derived and, and hemp products. products. And then yeah. CBD is part of that. Yeah. So that really said, okay, this is legal. You can, you know, transport it interstate. The bigger thing, too, is just for farmers to be able to grow it and then be able to get right. crop insurance and to be able to get th the things that you need to have in place to be able to actually, you know... Grow, grow hemp. Yeah, grow this. So definitely a lot of excitement around that for, for farmers across the country to be looking at that as a yeah. new crop. A big one was um, Texas just recently um, uh, made hemp growing legal. Right. So there's a you know, obviously a ton of, of uh, acreage and land in Texas that you can... <laughs> big place. And it was funny, I was watching big. the... I, I caught a little bit of the, some of the live footage of that, and the gentleman from Texas set, um, said, I think it was Oklahoma next door was growing growing it, and they mm -hmm. said, you know, we don't want to be second to Oklahoma, do we, ever? You know, it was kind of funny. He got a <laughs> right. bunch of laughter in the place, but that got passed. But okay. all I was going to add before we sort of jumped in today's was um, uh, uh, news was hemp in Florida. So it's really kind of in its final stages of getting the the approvals through the House and the Senate that it needs. Now, the Senate uh, approved their version of the hemp bill language and CBD's uh, a part of that, and okay. it's legal. Um, the House is now looking at, um, they're reading their versions of the bill as well. Okay. Now, they have a couple few versions, and, and one of those, to my understanding, doesn't have CBD as being legal inside of it. So okay. I'm not trying to raise any sort of warning uh, about it or alarm or, or red flag that doesn't uh -huh. need to be. It's just right. they're, they're looking at those versions. And um, I jumped over and I checked it. It's Bill um, 333 with the uh, House of Representatives. So okay. the neat thing about the U.S. Hemp Roundtable, and I'll jump back to this site, is if you do want to get involved and do want to get um, be a part of the um, you know, action behind him, you can go to the U.S. Uh, hemp Roundtable. It shows up as hempsupporter.com, and you can enter, um, you can go and click on a map and click on your state, Okay. and you can get access to letters, and you can send those out to your politician. So um, right. definitely moving forward in Florida, it's just there's a couple of more readings and things to go before it, it follows uh, okay. through, so just more to come there. But that's, that's really the only update, you okay. know, for, for news, because I know we wanted to jump into what we kind of wanted to cover today. Yeah, right. Yeah, CBD and addiction. Um, do you want to get started or <clears throat> did you well, like go ahead. I mean, yeah. I was, I was going to, you know, I know you've been really looking at, at this I and kind of, t you know, yeah. jumping into this saying, I think this is something that people would really want to, to know about um, and, and understand about it. So we've been doing kind of our own reading and trying to just be vanguards and get along the way. And I know you've done some, so right. Yeah. Means. Well, I, you know, I, I thought, first of all, I, I know people, I have people in my life who suffer from different addictions, um, alcohol, alcohol, you know, cigarettes. Um, I've known, been had people in and out of my life in the past that have had opioid addiction. So I just know that it touches everyone really, you know, some sort, either someone they love or, or them personally. So I thought talking a little bit about addiction and and how just along the, the way I've heard um, read that CBD can help in different ways and and certainly I know there's a big push talking about CBD getting people helping get people off of opioids so I thought well let me break it down a little bit see what the actual real research is and, and talk about it and, and guide people to some places that they could go to do some of their own and see, you know, with whatever they're dealing with and see how CBD could be helpful. Right. Um, so I started with, I thought I would start with alcohol and alcoholism because okay. that that really seems to be that's probably the most mainstream and one of the really oddly enough more accepted drugs i mean it's legal it's easy to get i guess cigarettes and nicotine are as well but they're not as socially acceptable but alcohol
alcohol is very socially acceptable. I mean, people, you know, even have parties at home, let their kids drink. It's it's very it's almost acceptable. driven into your mainstream thought with commercials right. and advertising and you know it's just you know it's just there <laughs> budweiser yeah. i mean even our our little you know our our kids amusement parks are owned and sponsored by yeah big beer companies and you know so it's it's just out there it's it really is out there and 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 listen you know i don't have um i i love a good margarita and i grew up in kentucky and, and my my brother's actually in the bourbon business i i love it and and it's great but i also know what it can lead to when there's problems with it and when it's abused and overused so um it, it's kind of interesting so some of the things that that i read and these are all things that everybody can go online and find um i started out with Project CBD, which is a real good go-to spot for me. Mm -hmm. And and what I read was this, uh, this particular article, this uh, researcher named Larry Parsons, and he's from Scripps um, Research Institute, um, found out that most of these studies are done in animals, just so we know, but that drinking alcohol um, initially is sort of a dose-specific way to increase 2-AG and anandamide, which are our endocannabinoids and those are the things that give us like the runner's high they mm -hmm. actually make us feel good well what they've found is that and you're saying dose it specific it. Okay. at first at first so dose specifically people drink alcohol or someone like me who drinks on occasion if i drink a little bit of alcohol my 2ag not my anandamide but my 2ag goes up a little bit okay and if i drink a lot of alcohol so that's something two, that you don't know that's happening you're obviously you just consuming really? and then you're and you feeling whatever that. you feel but it what's happening underneath is that there's it's this, affecting your endocannabinoid that's the chemical system. side of it yeah okay. so um if i drink a lot of alcohol it's very dose specific so if i drink a lot then i've got a ton of 2ag sloshing around in my brain okay so it raised the question for this researcher, and this is where they're going with this. And, that, and that's is, proven. That's, that's shown we know that, that, that can, yeah okay. we know that that's happening um so it raises this question are the pleasurable effects from alcohol caused by the increase in this 2AG that happens when you drink alcohol? Because that's what gives us a runner's high. So is it not really known what's happening? We don't happening? know that that's actually the feeling of pleasure that people are getting from alcohol really? is this rise in 2AG. But okay. they're starting to think that when you drink alcohol and it pumps this up, that's what happens. So it begins a cycle. However, and we know this now, and these are, again, this is mice studies, rabbit studies, you know, animal studies, that and, this is all happening. And 2-AG is a is an extremely important component of the endocannabinoid Endo, system, right. the ECS system that's bringing balance to the body. and homeostasis to the body systems so that it can Everything. run at its optimal performance at any moment. At any moment. Okay. So when we run, when we exercise, we, we produce a lot of this in these endocannabinoids. We also produce a lot of endocannabinoids when bad things happen. Um, we know it's a, the, the endocannabinoid system is a protector. It's nature's protector of everything in our body. So when we have a stroke, we know now that the body produces a lot, as much as it can, of 2-AG and anandamide. Okay. That's why we're starting now to see and feel that when, if someone can get a supplement of some sort of CBD, real good one, at the onset of a stroke, it'll reduce the effects of the stroke. Okay, so let's go back to alcohol. So this okay. is what's happening. So these pleasurable effects are we're thinking are probably caused by this increase in 2-AG. So now what happens is when someone begins to overuse alcohol or abuse alcohol, and there's, there's certainly a line, it becomes this, you know, where it's daily, daily drinking or even binge drinking just on weekends like college kids can do, this is what starts to happen. Okay it actually inhibits now the CB1 receptor and slows down or down, what they call down regulates the production of 2-AG. Okay. So now you've started a cycle in someone where when they first started drinking or they were just an occasional drinker, especially if say if they're young, under, you know, underage, their brain's not fully formed yet, all these things start to happen, this the cycle starts. So they want more, this pleasurable effect. They, they get a lot of 2-AG. They love it. That's great. Then they start drinking more and more, and it starts to down-regulate. The body says, okay, wait, we're out of balance here. We've got too much of this. We're going to stop making it in the kind of quantities that we're making it. So 
Now we've started to cycle for a person that that we believe can start to really cause this alcoholism, this ECS we're starting to see in just animal studies is really linked to this craving for alcohol because now your body's not making enough of it without the alcohol. So you start wanting to drink more and more and more. So the interesting thing to me about this is that, first of all, these animal studies are great. We, we know that, that long-term um, alcohol abuse starts to deplete, deplete this ECS tone. So now your ability to regulate your own mood, you can't. Okay. The ECS is responsible for regulating okay. your mood. When so you're an we, alcoholic, we you know can't. alcohol as a depressant. Really, right. mm -hmm. it's in that classification. Right, so, it is. And, and there's to any to anything. There's two sides to every coin. Right. There's a good side. There's a bad side. Mm -hmm. there, I mean, there's great, lots of fun stories. Yeah. You know, That's with the, yeah. the margaritas and the in the drinks. But at the same time, it's something that can really take hold and be destroying, devastating. Depre and then as a depressant, that's just a, a word. The the real effect is that you're just you're just down. Down. You're down, and and then you're trying to bring yourself back up in some kind of way. And so now you've kind of created this system that's out of balance and now you're, you're sort of out of control of it, right? right. At that uh, point, absolutely. you, you, you have, lit a fire that... Yeah, you can't control. So the physiological effects, and they start to cause these psychological things. You can't regulate your mood. You can't regulate your own impulsive behavior anymore. That is regulated by the ECS system. So now you can't control that anymore. Wow. So lots of things begin to happen and, and a person it just won't, won't even realize, uh, people around them will realize, but they yeah. won't realize that yeah. this is happening. Yeah. So they're not recognizing But there's things psychological like things too. Like we don't want to step out of our lane too much. No. There's people that you know, dedicate their lives and their daily purpose to helping to people helping out people. of these positions. Right. And I bet they have views of psychological help and things of that nature, but you're just talking about, let's just look at this kind of specific kind of yeah. underpinning thing that's just, happening yeah. chemically, because something has to be happening. Right. We know lots of things do, but this, how is this ECS tied to this? And the reason it was interesting to me was that I thought, well, you know, when someone's going through treatment for alcoholism or any other drug, and I'm going to get to other drugs in a minute, um, anything natural that could help make that easier and soften that and help their chances of actually staying clean or staying sober if they want to. Um, anything we can find that would help that, it doesn't have to be the one answer, but let's say someone's going to, to Alcoholics Anonymous or they're, or they're doing some sort of a treatment program, whatever it is, right. if, if supplementing with CBD or, or some sort of cannabis, any kind of compound like this that speaks to the ECS can, what we're starting to believe now at, with these animal studies is that one, that taking CBD reduces the addictive properties that alcohol has on the body. So if someone is, is supplementing with CBD, alcohol is less addictive to them. So at the beginning of trying to detach from that, taking CBD can help that. It can help the alcohol become less and less addictive because we're supplementing the body with something that it needs that it's reaching for the alcohol to get, right? Okay. So that's okay. that's one thing. Um, we know that it, it's a protector again, so we also a neuro, know a, a neuro protector. protector. So that and we had a previous show on concussions and yep. brain injuries, and we we talked about that about as well. About that, why you know why? So um, we also know for a fact in these in these mice that there are there's a seizure that happens when someone binge drinks that that's devastating called a wet brain seizure. Well, they are finding now that CBD can prevent this kind of seizure. So and and I'm sorry for the mice. I really cool. am, but they no, have an ECS the system, they right? Do. That's why yeah. someone will say, yeah, but it's a it's a it's 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 the animal. But the, every vertebrae has an I ECS that system, that. so that that that's really what can be tracked at any level, right? At right? any level, and and so you know we don't know. I, I've read a lot, and I'm learning, and I'm learning from these doctors that we don't really know um, exactly how this how these things will translate to humans, but we do know that that typically some of them will absolutely translate. So if you look at all of these things that I've talked about and the ways that that CBD can can help help someone become less addicted, help someone not become addicted, protect someone when they are addicted, all these different things that it can do yeah. in the mice, even if it only does a couple of these things in humans, 
it's still worthwhile. It's still worth looking into, and it's still really exciting news for someone that's an alcoholic or yeah. a heavy drinker that would like to not be, or would at least like to, to try to prevent a little bit of the damage that's happening while they figure it out. So it and was really and exciting. And, and if me. someone's watching this for the first time, then what we're talking about, and we talk specifically about the hemp plant. Hemp, right. And we, we love the, our, our ultra cell product, but we talk about that because the, the, it's the phytocannabinoid that is actually interacting with the body and mimicking that AG2, right? Right, 2 so AG can, it and, can, and anandamide. It, and anandamide. So right. it can help. That can help. That's a plant supplement. And, right. and then we like that because it's 0.0% THC, less, so. Than, less than. So there's no psychotropic effect. Right. That. And You're that's, getting all that's the benefit. Like. Yeah. And then CBD is just an acronym. And, and there's all there's more, so much more besides huh. CBD, CBD that's yeah. inside the plants. And, and uh, Consumer Reports has a little eight-minute video that I watched that was, that was kind of cool. And they're, they're talking uh, about um, can CBD treat. Uh, opioid oh, uh, addiction. addiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that are in here that I don't know when I hear about this is it seems like from the research, there's all kinds of research dancing around this. And there's a all, lot. You yeah. know, there's all kinds of, of um, testimonials, mm -hmm. you know, around this. But I think there's a little bit of am ambiguity when I read it as far as how much CBD are they taking? What are they taking? Mm -hmm. You know, for example, in this, they talk about taking 10 milligrams of CBD. Well, if you took 10 milligrams of CBD, you're only going to absorb 6% of that. Right. So with the UltraCell product, every time you take a standard dose, you're absorbing right. 15 milligrams. You're absorbing that. You'd have to take 167 milligrams of another product. Right. So I don't know, even in this study, you know, hey, so if you use the the ultra cell product, for example, instead of that, what, what might your results be? Because right. it's amazing. These people on opioids, not to switch you off alcohol. Yeah, but, we're, yeah. Right. I mean, they're, they're yeah. on such a period of time, all of a sudden they're taking 10 or, you know, 15 yeah. of, of these things a day, you know. Now, it's getting their pain down to a, maybe a three level. But then, in, like, if you're watching this on Consumer Reports, well, that was this uh, Veronica yeah. Wayne. She's a veteran and she was injured. Okay. Yeah, and she was saying her pain got taken down to a three with opioids. Now, with using a CBD product, she said, I'm at about a five. But she's not, you know, addicted or attached to those opioids, mm -hmm. you know. So I think it's just right. when we say this, there's so many variables still so about much. this. Right. But it's a very safe way to you know, implement something into your... Try. Yeah. Try. Yeah. That's really why I wanted to do this, because mm -hmm. I wanted to see what's being done, what's what research do we have, because I do hear doctors on mainstream media all the time say, oh, we don't have enough research, we don't know. And, and I, I agree, we don't, but we're getting there. And right now, a lot of these addiction studies are being done on animals, not on people. Um, but they're, they're translating really well, and we know that the product is safe. We, we know it's not interacting with very many drugs and other things. So it's just, it's a great opportunity and, and option for someone just to have something to try if they're right. dealing with something. So sometimes it's like lesser. What, you know, look, this is really harmful. Even if something was harmful, take the less harmful one, you know, right. whatever it is, you know, right. just, but, um, you know, so that, that's sort of my little bit on alcohol. I thought, you know, that was, there was a lot I, I read and I tried to get in as much of it as I could. It was And really, really what we're talking about is bringing the body into homeostasis. And, and what we've learned in, in now well over a year, you know, approaching two years of this is that you, when your body's in homeostasis and imbalance, it, it is all together, uh, right. mentally and physically. So when yeah. it's doing that, it, uh, the brain and the mind is extremely powerful to do something called memory reconsolidation. Yeah, and that's so interesting. So the um, CBD, when it's used to kind of supplement that system and get help you get back into balance, even mm -hmm. things like your your memory access, it may not erase a memory. There's right. there's memory removal, and then there's memory reconsolidation, which means how your mind, when something occurs, how your mind interprets that and how it translates into what's happening, okay. which is a, a very limited way to talk about what's kind of behind the scenes with PTSD. Mm, okay. So sure. um, without saying anything about you know research or what's happening, you just know how many how many how many vet how many veterans um, are are on this or using this, and it's help it's helping, helping. them in, in, in a lot of ways. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so now I'm going to switch over to the next little thing I studied, which was nicotine addiction and cigarette smoking, which okay. everybody knows, you know, 
awful for you and, and becoming less and less mainstream. You see fewer and fewer people smoking um, true. smoking cigarettes. But Some uh, manufacturers are stopping making make Yeah, this, making yeah. them. A lot of stores, yeah. I know CVS won't sell them anymore. So, you know, we're seeing so some progress. So tobacco corner going down and hemp, hemp is... Hemp yeah. going up, which is awesome. Um, so, very quickly, I, I read a study that I thought was incredible. And this is a human study, and I thought this was really cool. Um, so... What they did, they took just 24 smokers who had been smoking for a long period of time in their life. They all wanted to quit. They split them up into two groups of 12. They gave 12 of them an inhaler that, had, that was just CBD, cannabidiol inhaler. Okay. They gave the other half a placebo inhaler that had nothing in it, okay. just some flavor or whatever. And they tested them over two weeks, I believe. Um, huge. The 12 people that had the CBD and they said, just inhale this whenever you feel like you want a cigarette and then smoke normally. Smoke your cigarettes. Don't try to quit. But when you have a craving for a cigarette, inhale this thing first. Mm -hmm. That um, the 12 people that had the CBD inhaler smoked 40% less cigarettes in two weeks. Okay. I thought that was huge. That's to be able to cut your cigarette intake almost in half without... Anything else and without the, the, they're not trying to, to have them quit. They're saying, just do your regular thing, but hit this and, you know, inhale this before. So, you know, so what we, we know and what we believe, their, their symptoms of withdrawal, their nicotine symptoms were eased quite a bit with the CBD. They, yeah. It just took that brain burn away from them, that, that withdrawal symptoms, so that they were able to go longer they didn't feel like they wanted a cigarette again yeah. and so they 40 percent less so if i to me i think if you if you took that and you said look somebody that wants to quit just you know especially if they want that action you know of inhaling something that's a perfect thing to do just replace it with that and you know and and give it a try if it takes away those awful symptoms if you really want to quit you know it may increase your chances a lot to, yeah. to be able to quit and, and uh, maybe do it without being evil. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. right. So, that's, so that's, a, cool. that's a natural option mm -hmm. uh, for someone to try. I mean, do you Why know not? of any case of, at least in ours, let's just say full spectrum hemp, right. uh, less than 0%, 0.0% uh, 0 .0 THC. THC. Do you know of anyone, in any case ever research or personally of an addiction to CBD? I no. mean, the, no, well, no, and I'm I just saying no. that out loud because you, you can't. You so it's you not like you're trading one, one addiction, addiction for, the for the other. No, you're actually supplementing now with the vape with the vape pen. Mm -hmm. That was to give them the same sort of feeling. I, right. That's that, why I that think study. they did yeah. the inhaler, because that action, I think, is tied to smoking a, a great deal. So that just gave them something to replace instead of drops every time. Let's do the exact same thing you would do if you were smoking. Breathe in, breathe out. But instead of putting the nicotine and the chemicals in, we'll just do this CBD and see if it helps. Yeah. And apparently it did. Great. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and then, you know, moving from there to opioids, this is something I, I didn't know if, if you knew. I, I read this yesterday. So in 2010, there were enough opioids prescribed to give a one-month supply. Now think about this. One-month supply of 5-milligram hydrocodone four times a day to every person in the United States. And that was back in 2010. Wow. So our, our opioid crisis is, you know, is huge. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's beyond, that was 2010. So, and it's just growing and growing. Everyone knows we're hearing about it all, all the time. So I, I, I will say just with the brief time we have left, um, for people to look up something, there was a study in 2016 in Michigan um, that had, you know, tw I think they did 250-ish users of opioids um, when they put them on a cannabis product. Now it was CBD, uh, like a one-to-one, -one, um, so equal amount of THC and CBD, 64% um, decrease in their opioid use. Okay. That's, 
you know, okay. that's huge. Um, a decrease in their side effects from their other medications and a 45% improvement in their quality of life. Wow. That was 2016 in Michigan. An another study in Israel, very similar. Um, I have some statistics here. 44% of the people were able to um, completely stop their opioid therapy in seven months after they started on a cannabis, a THC, CBD therapy. So seven months, wow. over seven months, they were able to stop. Wow. So we're, these are human studies now. We have a ton of, of animal studies that tell us that it works very well in opioids and methamphetamines and those sort of things. But these are actual human studies that people can find. Wow. So, um, it, the, and then the last thing I'll say is that I saw something that really blew me away was that the Journal of the American Medical Association, the AMA, had a quote that said, passing a state cannabis law reduced opioid overdose deaths by 24.8%. Wow, that's an amazing statistic. That's yeah. one in four, one in four people yeah. by p just passing a state cannabis law, yeah. giving people access to something else. So, so there's information uh, on product at fitfamilycbd.com. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we keep a lot of information there. We put our videos there as well. Now you reference Project CBD as a good resource because you can resource. go in there and go buy conditions and you can, and then you're going to find a lot of different supporting papers if you really want to get in there and read it. That's where you know, I we always talk everything. about the simplicity of this product to, you know, give, give it a try, give it a shot. We take it anyways, but the Ramp, the ramifications of getting your body into balance can really impact and, and change Every lives. Every area and of your life. That's why we continue that's, to that's do what we keep we're doing. doing it. It. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I thought yeah. you had a lot of great information today. Good. I, I really it was appreciate what, everything you put together and just your passion about this one. You know, if it touches one person, two person, it's a, you know, it's, it, it's affected me. Know. So I thought maybe it would affect other people. So you guys, um, awesome. I hope it was awesome. helpful to everyone. Uh, come visit us at fitfamilycbd.com. We thank everybody for joining us today and we will see you next time on that CBD show.